Hey guys, John from Want Clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. My name is John, I'm an AI-generated voice, and in today's video, Lars will tell you how you can set up an ESP32-S3 to solo mine Bitcoin. So let's get started. Hey guys, one clue here. I hope you liked the short AI generated voice introduction in the beginning. If you do so, give me a comment about this. Maybe I will do this more often uh, or even do complete videos about it. But in today's video, I will show you how you can use such a tiny device like this, an ESP32 S3 from LilyGo to try to solo mine Bitcoin. As always, I need to say this is no financial advice and it is the potential that you never will find a block. So do your own research if you really want to do so. Otherwise, let's jump into what we need to do. So the first thing, as you can see, I have this ESP32 here. I soldered a couple of cables to it so that I can attach a little tiny fan to this. I also 3D printed myself a custom yeah housing for this device with a lid as well um, all the files for 3d printing can be found in the github repository from nerd miners they released the software and the 3d files for this so that you can actually use this to mine bitcoin with this tiny device it doesn't have have a lot of hash power but there's always the potential that you could find a block. If it will happen depends on the luck factor, I would say. As I said in the beginning, there's always the potential that you never will find a block. So I will put links in the video description down below that you can buy this on Amazon. And I also will put the AliExpress link in the video description because I bought this on AliExpress for roughly 20 bucks, but the shipping was about two to three weeks. If you want to get it quicker and just fire this up, then you can also purchase this on Animus and therefore just use the link in the video description. So let's jump over to the PC and what we actually need. As you can see, I'm currently on the GitHub repository from Bitmaker Hub. They released a software called NerdMiner uh, underscore V2. And this is the software that I am using to actually run this device and use this as a Bitcoin solo miner. So what you need to do is to download the file. You can download the zip file, extract the file, and then you need something like Visual Studio Code. What you need in here is the extension platform IO. I will not cover in this video how you can install the necessary plugins on your device or on your uh, VS Code program but you should figure this out on your own. You also could quickly Google this. So once you have uh, installed this and once you have opened the files, the actual repository, you can start and build the device. It's pretty simple. You just click on platform IO, you make a, a quick clean. Now it's cleaning the whole device and I will quickly show you on the camera what I'm gonna do now is I quickly put this into the power. Therefore, this uses USB-C. As you can see, it is powering up and I currently have configuration files in it. So it, as you can see, it's right away starting to hash. Um, it hashes about uh, 22 to 27 kilo hashes per second. It's not really the fastest one, as I said, and there's always the potential that you never will find a block. But as I said, I will show you how to actually use this and how you can set this up. Um, so I quickly press the key button to eliminate all the files, the configuration files that are in here. This will take a couple of seconds. As you can see, now it is restarting. It's telling you Wi-Fi has been set up. It's showing you a little QR code. Uh, I'm sorry for the bad camera. But uh, yeah, it's also telling you the SSID of this miner is not miner AP and the password so that you can log in into it is mine your coins. 
Um, but let's get back into Visual Studio Code. I just wanted to show you how it looks when you power it up. What we need to do here is after you've done a clean, you can start with a build. Just double click on it and it will start doing the build of the actual release. What you also need to make sure is that you run this on the correct COM port. So every USB device that you plug in into your PC gets a COM port. Uh, therefore, make sure that you connect this to your actual and correct COM port. Uh, you can simply click on it and it will give you a series of different devices that you can actually connect with Visual Studio Code. So after a couple of seconds, it told me success, everything has been compiled. What you can do now is double click on upload. This will actually connect with your device. And let's see if I open up the camera. Another device has been turned off. It is actually been rewritten with the files that are in this repository that we just built. In the background, you can see uh, everything is building here and the device is now done. It's resetting and now we can connect to it. So let me quickly connect to it. I need to interrupt my Wi-Fi and I see the NerdMiner AP. Uh, I'm connecting to it. The password for the NerdMiner AP is mine your coins. I'm sorry. And now uh, let me deactivate the camera again. Now we can open page. Let me see, uh, 192.168.4.1. This will put you over to the Wi-Fi and configuration manager. Simply click on config Wi-Fi. It will take a couple of seconds and now you can actually go over. All you need to do is now click on one of those Wi-Fi's that you want to connect, put in your Wi-Fi password, put in the pool that you want to use. I myself do not suggest the uh, CK pool. It has a it has a fee of two percent, and therefore what I use is zsolo.bid. Uh, to set this up, it's really simple. All you need to do is to uh, in one second. I will put it up here. All you need to do is go to zsolo.bid. Click on Bitcoin. Uh, click on connect or go down to the connection details and now you can actually just copy this. You can put this in here and we want to get the port out here, put the port in here. Then you need to put in your BTC address and after you've set up your Wi-Fi and you have put in the credentials for your Wi-Fi, you can click on save. And I will show you how it looks in a second. So I am back. As you can see, uh, the miner is still connected and we see it is hashing. So it's trying to resolve the issue that is currently being presented by the pool. And if I show you the camera, here you can see it is actually displaying something on your display. The thing is, it is trying to solve the issue. If it will find actually the issue depends on really the luck factor if it is capable of. The hash rate it is producing is not that much. It is really low, but as you can see, it is working. Now what I'm going to do is I disconnect it and I put it in this little housing for this miner and I will show you the end result.
yeah, now everything is in this container and we can start right away and power this up again. And now it is reading the configuration files in it and it's automatically connecting to the pool that we have been set up. It just needs a couple of seconds. There we go. We are connected to Wi-Fi and it should start right away. There you go. Um, the fan is also spinning as you can see. Yeah. So it's really simple to set this up and now I will put it somewhere in the corner in my office here and it is working and hashing right away. I hope you like the video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on further videos. See you on the next one.